Welcome to Workflow Series Part 3, Worklets. My name is Glenn D'Amato. We're going to learn how to create and use a worklet in an existing workflow. We're also going to learn how to pass a value generated by a worklet into the parent workflow. Did you ever end up with too many sessions in one workflow? That makes the workflow difficult to navigate and maintain. But if you make more smaller workflows, you'll have to start them and manage them separately. The solution is to use worklets, which are collections of sessions and other tasks that are similar to workflows, but they are nested inside workflows. Let me demonstrate. This is a rather large workflow. It contains 15 individual sessions, among other tasks, that load a dimensional model for decision support. We can break down this workflow into three separate worklets to make it more manageable and maintainable. Let's zoom in on this workflow so we can take a closer look. In the first part of the workflow, these seven sessions load our dimension tables. The middle part of the workflow contains two command tasks that drop and rebuild the indexes in the fact table respectively and a single session that loads the fact table. The latter part of the workflow contains seven sessions that load our summary or aggregate tables. This assignment task here will add together the total number of records that failed in all 15 sessions and if that number exceeds zero, this email will be sent to a responsible party. Now, how can we simplify this workflow by using worklets? We're going to take the first part of the workflow, which loads our dimension tables, and copy those sessions to the Windows clipboard. Then we're going to go to the worklet designer and make a single worklet. I'm going to name my worklet Load Dimensions. I'm going to paste my sessions into the worklet. I'm going to arrange them horizontally and I'm going to link them to our start tasks. Then I'm going to save the worklet to the repository and as you can see the worklet appears very much like a workflow. One big difference between worklets and workflows is that you cannot run a worklet all by itself. The only way that you can run a worklet is to embed it inside of a workflow. We're going to make two additional worklets based on the middle portion of the workflow and the latter portion. I'm going to take the objects that deal with loading the fact table. I'm going to copy those as well. And I'm going to make a second worklet to load our fact table. As you can see, this worklet contains both command tasks and email task and a reusable session that loads our fact table. And then I'm going to make a third worklet that loads our arrogate or summary tables. Now that we have our three worklets visible in the navigator window in the worklet subfolder, we're going to replace the respective sessions in the workflow with the respective worklets. I'm going to delete these instances of these seven sessions that load our dimension table. And I'm going to replace them with the worklet that contains those sessions. As you can see, the worklet appears as a single icon in the workflow. Let's zoom in so we can see that a little bit closer. And then we'll complete the workflow by linking the worklets together. This is our completed workflow with three worklets inside of it. This worklet contains the seven sessions to load our dimension tables. This lo worklet loads our fact table, including the command tasks. This worklet here loads our aggregate tables. And then we still have the logic so that we can count the total number of failed records and uh, send an email to somebody if the total number of failed records exceeds zero. There is a problem, however. These worklets contain sessions that would normally generate a failed record count that would be measured by the workflow. But because they're inside of worklets, we need to pass the number of failed records to the workflow that contains the worklet. How do we do that? 
in our load dimension tables worklet, I'm going to declare a worklet variable to hold the number of records that failed against the dimension tables. Then I'm going to make an assignment task to set the value of that worklet variable. We're going to do that by making an expression that adds together the total failed records from each session. This is our completed expression. So when our worklet completes, our assignment task here on the right will set the value of the worklet variable equal to the total number of failed records from all seven dimension tables. We'll do the same for the load fact worklet and the load aggregate tables worklet. Now how will the workflow receive the value from the worklet? If we double click on the worklet and go to the variables tab, here at the top of the screen, we can set the value of a user-defined worklet variable equal to a workflow variable of the parent workflow. We hit the new symbol here. There's the user-defined worklet variable. And then here on the right-hand side, we will choose the workflow variable that we want to set our worklet variable to, the total failed records. After the worklet completes, the value of the number of rows that failed against the dimension tables will be set to equal the total number of failed records. That value will be tested in this link arrow pointing to the email, so that if the total number of failed records exceeds zero, an email will be sent. If we take a look at the worklet that loads our fact tables, you might be wondering, wouldn't it be better to take the commands that are run by these command tasks and make them part of the workflow properties in the components tab. Well, the problem with that approach is the components tab is hidden within the session properties, and that means the command would not be visible in the interface. Workflows were invented several years ago in order to give you as graphical an environment as possible. A better approach would be to use a command task and especially a reusable command task. How is that done? For a complete demonstration, please see Workflow Series Part 4, Command Tasks. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Thank you for watching.